One of the most asked questions I get as an immigration attorney is, do I qualify for the O-1B Extraordinary Ability Visa or EB-1 Green Card? This is five things to know on how to obtain an O-1 Visa or EB-1 Green Card. I am immigration attorney John Veely, CEO of Online Visas, the intelligent immigration platform. Welcome to Voice of Immigration. Here are five things that can help you understand how to qualify for an extraordinary ability visa. Number one, what do you do best in the field? A lot of people tell me I own a company or we have this great service or a tool or change the world or they're an actor that is, was in this movie or they were a part of some production or another. Um, these are important things and impressive things, but it's not what you are in, but what have you achieved in your industry and in entertainment in your form of entertainment as a dancer, as a singer, as an actor? Um, it's how do you do your specific process, method, what have you starred in, how significant was it, and those sorts of things. What is your specialization? What's your niche? This is how we build the case. Number two, how have you been recognized in your field? Have you seen your IMDB? Have you looked for yourself on Google? Have you been the part of uh, some sort of critical review or articles about you? It's how significant are you that's really the key to all of this, not what you've done. So under the O-1B, evidence that a beneficiary has received or been nominated for significant national or international awards or prizes in a particular field, such as an Academy Award, Emmy, Grammy, or Director's Guild Award. Those are the big ones. If you have any of those, whether you've won it or you've been nominated above it, then you've gotten the visa. But many haven't. So we need evidence of at least three of the other following criteria. So performed and will perform services as a lead or starring participant in productions or events uh, which have a distinguished reputation as evidenced by critical reviews, advertisements, publicity releases, publications, contracts, or endorsements. All right, the key is and here, performed and will perform. So what we see on that is people may have been in something very significant, but they're going to be in something that's not significant in the United States. And if it's a new project, how do you determine that's significant? Well, look to who's in it. Are there any stars that are acting in it? Has the producer or director also done a lot of things? Have they either made a lot of money or have they uh, won awards for doing it? These are the sort of things that help you build that. Another one is achieve national or international recognition for achievements as shown by critical reviews or other published materials by or about the beneficiary in major newspapers, trade journals, magazines, and other publications. The one interesting thing about the O1B is it's how do you evidence these things? Letters are not enough, right? So if you see on both of those first two criteria, it's critical reviews, advertisements, publicity releases, publications, right? Um, Articles. These are the sort of things that are the hard evidence that you need to produce. The third criteria, perform and will perform in a lead, starring, or critical role for organizations and establishments that have a distinguished reputation, such as evidence by articles in newspapers, trade journals, publications, or testimonials. The next one is demonstrated a record of being commercial or critically acclaimed successes as shown by indicators as title, rating, or standing in the field box office receipts, motion picture or television ratings, and other occupational achievements reported in trade journals, major newspapers, or other pu publications. The next one is receive significant recognition for achievements from organizations, critics, governmental agencies, and other recognized experts in the field which the beneficiary engaged with testimonials clearly indicating the author's authority, expertise, and knowledge of the beneficiary's achievements. The difference of this one and the others above is this where you have the opportunity to have a letter. This is where a critic or a governmental agency, or another expert who you select can write these things about you. Now, what makes it really interesting is knowing the distinction between an expert and a reference, right? A reference is somebody you've worked with, somebody that's either been your boss or maybe you've been the boss of them. They have a vested interest in your history. If it's somebody you're going to work for, they are also not an expert. They have a vested interest in getting you approved. What you want is somebody with some degree of independence. They need to be good at what they're doing but you don't have to have worked for them. They don't have to even know you personally, but they can. 
what they have to do is be able to look at the hard evidence that we've talked about above, these critical reviews, advertisements, PR releases, those sorts of things, and then say what it means to be able to provide from their analysis as an expert what's important about this stuff. Another one of them is commanded a high salary or will command a high salary or other substantial remuneration for services in relation to others in the field as shown by contracts or other reliable evidence. This one's an or, not an and. So you could have had a high salary at one of your jobs before, one of the things you've done before, but you don't have to command a high salary on this side. Now that is different. What we say is have starred and will star. So you have to be coming to be the star in a presentation, but you don't have to command a high salary on this one. If the above standards do not readily apply or the beneficiary's occupation in the arts um, the petitioner may submit comparable evidence in order to establish eligibility. This comparable evidence exception does not apply to the motion picture or television industry. So it does for others, singers, dancers, those sorts of things. All right. So the difference between the O1A and the O1B is that the O1B is different than the EB1. The O1A is very similar to the EB1. So in the other industries for extraordinary ability, if you make one, um, you can use similar evidence to do the green card afterwards, although it's a higher standard. All right. So, but if you're coming from the arts and entertainment and you did the O1B, the distinction of the EB1 criteria are fairly significant. Let's go through those. So number one is national or international awards or prizes of excellence. We talked about that, um, that these are lesser national or international prizes for excellence. Um, not the Grammy or, or, uh, the Emmy or those sort of things. Right. But, is it a national or international award? That's what you need to look at. So really what you want to look at is what is it not, okay? So it's not a state award. It's not a city award. It has to be national or international. And are they drawing from a body like that? Sometimes you can get some backup uh, material about the award and how it draws it. You always want to get actual evidence, which would be, say, a website that lists the criteria as opposed to a letter. The letters are not given a lot of weight. Now, they can fill in some blanks, but they shouldn't replace evidence. Number two, being a member of associations whose membership requires outstanding achievements judged by nationally or internationally recognized experts in their respective discipline. All right, so again, let's look at what it's not. These are not organizations that anybody can get into, right? So if, uh, if all you have to do to be in that association is sign up, pay a fee, and it's this big organization that has conferences and things like that, even if impressive, that doesn't work. It has to have some sort of threshold that has criteria which are enumerated somehow, maybe on their website, maybe on some, some official documentation and a process that you have to be vetted and that you have to have had achievements of a certain level is what you need to be on that. Number three, their work has been featured in professional or high profile trade publications or mainstream media. The question is, is it about you or is it about your organization? Okay, if it's about your organization, your group, your theater group, your movie, that can work, but you're going to have to tie yourself to it. Sometimes letters can do that. Sometimes they can't. Number four, the applicant has served in some capacity as the judge of the work of others or a closely related field. Just like in one of the other criteria we talked about, let's look at what it's not. Um, if your job is that it's to judge others all the time, like a teacher or a coach, you can't count that. What's better is if you're an actor or an entertainer and you're asked to come and judge other actors or entertainers to see if they're sufficient. Then you want to have evidence for that. Is there a flyer? Is there communications? Uh, was there a website that talked about this? Number five, have you had articles that you've published in scholarly publications? Uh, a lot of times immigration will look at Google Scholar. Have you been cited there? Are you the first author, author or down the list? These are all the things to look at the significance of that. Also, how many? Um, number six, have you made original contributions um, in scientific, academic, or business contributions of major significance in your field? Um, this one doesn't really deal with entertainment, but maybe there's a business side of it. Maybe you have had something significant. If you have, it might be worthy of, of doing it. But this is where you look at your major contributions. What would you say at a cocktail party? Um, what would somebody say about you in your obituary? What was the major thing that you've accomplished and um, how have you been um, credited for doing that? Number seven, have you served in a leading or critical capacity for a highly reg regarded organization or establishment? This is where you could get letters from your employer or that organization dealing with 
your, your duties, and the significance of what you did for the organization as a whole. Number eight, have you commanded a high salary or remuneration or other services as compared to others in the field? This is where you need to get data of what does the field um, pay for this. Now, if it's in the United States, there's the FLC data center and you can plug in different jobs and see what they pay. Um, in other industries, there might be some industry data. This is always very important to be able to, to pick that data point so that you can show that you've made more than that, either through your contracts or pay stubs or taxes. Then there's other comparable or relevant evidence of exceptional expertise that does not fit any of the other criteria. A lot of those things might be like speaking um, uh, on a panel or something like that. It's not to judge the work of others, but maybe you spoke at a conference, those sort of things. Number three, can I work for my own company or consult outside my position um, in the entertainment industry, right? And the answer is yes. So the O-1 visa allows you to have an agent-based petition. That's where an agent, and we do this for about 500 different companies at any one time or individuals. Um, you could create your own corporation um, and then you could have a number of clients. You don't want to just have a shell, but you have to have clients of your corporation in there. Um, you can work for that corporation and that allow you to do other things. Now on the O-1B, unlike the O-1A, you can do other gigs down the road uh, without having those predefined. Um, with the EB-1, um, you could have this job, this company be the petitioner for you, as long as there were other companies that it was doing business with. Number four, um, I can get letters from important people. Is this enough? This is one of the things we see when we inherit cases from others, is that it's just full of letters, right? Letters are not very strong on their own. Letters have a important role. They are there to clarify things. Think of the evidence like a contract or an award as a brick. Think of the letter as the mortar. They can explain why is this award an impressive award? Why is the job that you've done there um, important and how did it help the company as a whole, right? But don't just rely on letters by themselves. I don't care how important the people are. Um, that is an important factor, but what they discuss and how they inform and educate the adjudicator is really what it's all about. Understanding the difference of what an expert talks about and what a reference from a prior employer talks about are really important. Number five, what are some examples of evidence which is insufficient? Immigration officials will play gotcha with you if you try to use certain types of evidence to meet a criteria. We have seen instances where they think if you're exaggerating or trying to convince them of something that meets a criteria and it doesn't, that it can affect the entire case. This is rare, but it can happen. The best thing to stay away from are these insufficient pieces of evidence. A, local press. Remember, it has to be about national press or trade journals that have some significance to them. B, national organizations that only have fee-based entry under the membership. We talked about that, right? Student awards. Those are not sufficient. That's before you get into industry. So if you're in an entertainment and you want an award by your university for best actor, don't try to use that as a best actor award. Regional awards, again, they have to be national or international. Don't use a regional one. These are five things that are important, but if you really want to learn more about your case, please go to onlinevisas.com and sign up for a free strategy session. We're glad to talk to you about your case and your situation. We'll evaluate your achievements and give you an opinion on whether you meet those standards or what you can do to pick up more than necessary criteria by taking actions to obtain more evidence. Many times we'll have a conversation and think that the, those folks aren't there. We'll give them a couple hints and they come back and they have it and then we can help them at that point. In the strategy session, we'll give you a quote for our fee and estimate on how long it will take you to obtain the visa. Also, if you want to learn more, you can sign up for our webinars on how to qualify for an extraordinary ability O-1 visa or EB-1 green card. Uh, if it's already happened, you can see replays of that. These webinars are much more in-depth than this video and address specific industries such as athletes, entertainers, artists, business people, including entrepreneurs. I'm John Veely. I'm the CEO of Online Visas, and we deliver dreams.